So I made a little etude, uh, or two etudes actually, of the tune Woody and You by uh, Dizzy Gillespie, I think it is. Uh, so I'm gonna go over these and uh, explain uh, how I came up with these etudes. But I just wanna thank my uh, Patreons. I didn't think I was, I was gonna get any, maybe two uh, in a few years, so. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm still not at my goal there, but uh, I'm surprised how uh, many Patreons I have, even though they're not that many, more than I expected. And so thank you to you guys. So this tune, uh, it's a little bit tricky. It has a whole bunch of minor two fives in it. It's like a series of two fives. And I always thought this tune was uh, pretty difficult to solo over. So I recently posted a bunch of videos with a two five licks and minor two five one licks. And I also made a video on strategies for minor two fives. So I'm gonna combine those licks, some of them, and the information that I presented in that video uh, to come up with these etudes. I'm not sure if they're etudes because I think an etude should be something that you can actually perform. I think that's the idea in the classical world that it's a, it's a something that you can practice so that you can improve your technique but it's also supposed to be a nice piece of music so these are not really something i would perform they're just uh, exercises i guess so let's just look at the tune first g minor 7 flat 5 to c7 altered i guess f minor 7 flat 5 to b flat altered E flat minor seven flat five to A flat to D flat major seven. So here's the thing in that minor seven minor two five strategies, I said that you can kind of sometimes ignore the minor seven flat five and just treat it as a regular two five. And I think that works especially well over the last two five before the one. So the E flat to A flat. I tend to play regular two five there, even though the real book says minor seven flat five. Oh, sorry, my so so even though the real book says minor seven flat five there, I think it sounds better with just regular minor seven to A flat. So, so I took some licks, minor seven, two, five, one lick. Same thing, just transpose to the F and B flat. And then I took a regular minor two, five lick. So then we have the same chord progression again. Then I take this lick, which is the Hot House lick, right? From the tune Hot House. Love that sound. And then just another 2 5 1 lick. Then we have the next section, which is A minus 7. A flat minor seven to D flat three times to G flat major seven. So it's a little bit unusual, unusual how that 
the chords fall in the beat. Same thing in B flat minor to E flat seven, A flat. Some books, some people play A flat dominant there, or I've seen A flat major seven. It's kind of up to you which one you prefer, I guess. A lot of people do this, so A flat, A minor, A flat minor, B flat minor, B minor. I have also covered that in a previous lesson called uh, chromatic two fives. It's a very common thing to do, right? For those of you who follow my lessons, you're already familiar with that concept, or maybe you were familiar with it even before you discovered my videos. Who knows? Moving on to this. Also uh, from my previous video. They're just licks. Minor 7 flat 5 to or minor 2 5 1 licks. And then a major 2 5 1 lick very common it's like cliche right sounds like that tune in walked bud is that what it's called then you can kind of mess around with the rhythm there all right so that was the whole thing I'll play the whole thing for you next section open so that you can figure out something for yourself or leave something open for improvisation so that it's not all planned out right and then uh, the last one so I got this uh, app what is it called the I real book I try to resist it for the longest time because um, I hate actually when people pull this up their iPhones or whatever on a gig and pull up the chord changes if they don't know the tune even though I'm myself guilty of kind of peeking at their iPhones <laughs> but uh, yeah so obviously there's problems with this kind of thing but it's also at the same time amazing you can you can just change the key right you change the tempo in an instant and it's some people say that it sounds good but i disagree i think it sounds terrible but for what it is it's amazing uh, as long as you're not too much relying on this thing if you use it in the right way i might come back to talking about the pros and cons or whatever with uh different play longs and what have you but anyhow i have this tune here Woody and You by Dizzy Gillespie so I'll play this first etude over this kind of medium tempo I guess and you shall hear what that sounds like here we go you want to this is great for when you have a tune that is too difficult like you're struggling with the changes it's a good idea to write out a solo like this some people are against it I think because they think it's uh, licks they're afraid of licks uh, but uh, I think it's necessary especially if this would be a ridiculous tempo and a lot of people play this tune in a really really fast tempo and I've said it's I've said this many times in my previous videos, you kind of need an arsenal of uh, material for
for those kind of situations where you're playing a tricky tune in a super fast tempo. So this kind of practicing helps. Uh, but then of course you also want to practice more creative stuff with the, this is not creative. This is just uh, learning to play something over the tune. Moving on to the next uh, etude, number two here. So again, this is on my Patreon page, right? So uh, I pretty much did the same thing. Well, here um, I'm covering stuff I talked about in the minor two fine strategies video. So there I said that you can play a Phrygian dominant scale over both chords in a minor two five. So C Phrygian dominant works over both G minor seven flat five O and C seven. So if I do that, it sounds like this. And then I do the same thing transpose down to F and B flat. And then I have one, another of the two five one licks with a thank you, David Baker, which I also covered previously. Then I play a Phrygian dominant Bob scale descending. A B flat Phrygian dominant Bob scale. If you don't know what that is, again, uh, check my previous videos. And yet another uh, 251 like cliche sounding. We've all heard that kind of sound, I think. And then the B section, again, open for something that you, for you guys to come up with something by yourself. Then I put in a diminished, symmetrical diminished scale uh, kind of stuff at the end there. Very hip lick. Sounds kind of out there. And then finally, another 251 lick. So let's see what that sounds like, shall we? up there so let me do this again ah. I keep messing up the last one it's pretty tricky so i'll play that just that one for you so you you'll hear it the last section that was some weird counting <laughs> Right, so uh, I'm actually more um, kind of suggesting here that you learn these etudes, but then you come up with your own. So it's basically an idea, giving you ideas of how you can come up with your own, right? So using these scales and these kind of licks and finding your own licks and lifting solos and just making up your own licks, write your own etudes and memorize them. And the idea is that 
the more you do this, the more licks you learn, the more uh, you master the scales. And at, uh, the goal is to be able to just connect everything fluidly uh, as you go. So it's kind of like improvising, like talking. You're, you know, connecting ideas and sentences, but you need something to, <laughs> to say, right? So uh, for these types of tunes, you need licks, in my opinion. I've said it before, like the bebop tradition, fast tunes definitely calls for licks. So with that, I shall see you next time. Mm -hmm.